bringing you six new advanced building and editing techniques we recently saw that are too good not to share. With how difficult some of these are, it'll definitely take some practice to get them down pat. But once you do, you can use them in either real matches or creative to confuse and outplay your opponents. So for today's question of the day, we need to ask, what's your favorite building or editing technique? For me personally, it's the quick wall replace ramp play because it's just so good at catching people off guard. If you guys are looking to get better at Fortnite, click the link below to go to ProGuides.com where you can play with the best players in the world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video to show us your support. We really appreciate it. First up, it's the phasing jump or super jump, initially discovered by Parallel Beats. This technique utilizes phasing on several different pieces to push you upward. So with all that phasing, it ends up being one of the fastest and material efficient ways to gain height. To do it, you first need to make sure you're reaching the height of your jump in the correct position. Around the middle of a floor's edit tile is a pretty decent way to judge the right spot. From here, you jump up and wait until you reach the height of your jump. As you're jumping, you should be moving your crosshair down and to the left. That way, your stairs will face left of your starting direction and you'll be able to land on it. Then, at this point, you want to start moving your crosshair back to the forward direction you started with while also still aiming downward. Place a floor piece, then a ramp immediately after. If done correctly, you should phase through both pieces and end up on your second stairs, all within one jump. This is no easy trick by any means. If you place your ramp too early, you'll end up underneath it. Anytime you phase through your stairs, you're probably not in the right location. And if your crosshair is in the wrong spot, your builds will be too. So you've got to make sure you're perfecting each and every step if you want to pull this off consistently. Next up are some honestly remarkable variations to the last phasing technique posted by Sir Duck D on Reddit. In his video showing off some sweet builds, he incorporates the jump with some fancy edits to crank up even more. Start by doing the same phase jump technique we just showed you. When you complete it and land on your second ramp, start editing the stairs. Immediately jump after starting the edit. And while in the air, quickly edit the stairs to the left. Confirm it, then place another floor and another forward ramp. Now you're up several stories in seconds using only floor and ramp pieces. Depending on your consistency, you can actually do these fast enough to the point where you trigger jump fatigue, which makes it a pretty dang quick way to get vertical height. You don't necessarily need to edit the ramp left, editing it backwards also works. And if you're starting from the right side of your floor piece, you'd simply edit the stairs in that direction instead. Sir Duckty also showed off how to use this technique more practically. You can use it as a 1v1 start or really at any point where your starting position is on a ramp. Run up the stairs and connect a floor piece in front of it as soon as you can. When you reach the top part of your stairs, jump. Try to position so that you're at the sweet spot when you reach the height of your jump. From here, you can then turn left to place the stairs, floor, then the second ramp, and continue on with the editing variation for more height before finishing by ramping and coning outward. All in all, these techniques are a unique and quick way to gain height while also conserving material. Traditional 90s might be faster, but if you're ever in a real match needing to gain height on limited mats, these moves might just come in handy. Plus, they look incredible. In case you're wondering whether there's a more straightforward way to use the super jump technique, here's a retake variation shown off by user Yellow Panther. You start off just like with any other retake by doing a scissor ramp. Once you reach the point where you want to initiate the jump, place down a cone instead of stairs. Just ensure there isn't a ramp directly above the cone or else you won't be able to make the jump. Also, it's not entirely necessary if you can connect to the scissor ramp, but for added protection, place two walls above your cone. Then position yourself on the cone similar to where you would need for the other super jumps, near the center of the edit tile. From here, jump up, do a 180, and place a floor and some stairs. Edit the ramp to flip it in the opposite direction, jump up, and confirm the edit. After confirming, quickly face the other direction again, place another floor and ramp, and then look up to set another ramp and cone. As we said, you don't necessarily need both walls above the pyramid. If you have a scissor ramp behind the cone, you actually don't need any walls at all. But adding the walls provides more protection in case somebody tries to knock you down. So it's an extra step, but it's worth it for the added safety. Next up, a trick that takes advantage of resetting an underused ramp edit to phase it for just a second and sneak in a quick shotgun blast. This trick was shared from a user by the name of Ryu Zanami, and he's calling it the Ryu Classic. So how do you pull it off? Start by getting control of the ramp piece inside a box. Perform a U-shaped stair edit, starting from either the far right tile and ending at the far left one or vice versa. Before you confirm, make sure to run up the ramp just far enough so you'll end up on the second floor part of it. 
confirm your edit, and try to hug a wall. Either the one to your side closest to you, or the one on your back. Then, with your shotgun out, reset the edit and quickly go for a shot on your opponent. If done correctly, the stairs should be phased just long enough for a shot to pass through. The stairs are only phased for a second, so unless your opponent has god-tier reactions, they won't be able to retaliate. It seems as if touching a wall is almost necessary to pull this off consistently. We find that the back wall works best. Not the small little railing on the ramp, but an actual wall. So in a typical fashion, you'd use this trick by first wall replacing somebody, editing the wall open, then taking control of the ramp inside the box. You'd then quickly do the U-shaped edit, put your back against the wall you took, and reset for the shot. Or you can use it when someone is pressuring your box. Set up the U-ramp, let them take your wall and edit it, then reset the ramp for the sneaky shot. When using this trick, speed is of the essence. If you're too slow, your opponent is probably just going to edit out into a new box. And if your opponent is spraying a weapon, chances are they'll break the ramp before you finish the edit. Ping ends up also being a crucial factor. The higher your ping gets, the more delay on every action, like confirming edits and pulling out your guns. So on very high pings, this might not work at all. But we tested it up to 100 and it still worked pretty consistently. If your ping is decent but your shot's still not going through the ramp, you're probably not putting your back against a wall. That's the most critical step people seem to be forgetting. Also, one last note on the conditions. Yeah, there's a lot. You need a pump shoddy to pull this off. I know, we should have opened with that, but right now, the tack shotguns just have too long of a pullout delay, which make the shot hit your ramp every time. With all the circumstances needed to pull off the Ryu Classic, we'd say this move is more suited for box fighting in creative, especially since it requires a pump. But that's not to say that you can't pull it off in a real match. That's definitely still doable. The next trick we're sharing is called the Confusion Jump, a box fighting technique by Regan57. It's effectively a way to confuse your opponent from inside your 1x1 by performing a side jump. With it, you'll have added protection and multiple options to exit your box, making your side jump a less obvious read. Start out from the default position of inside your box. You need to make sure you own every piece, so ensure that there's a cone inside your base as well as a floor and pyramid for the roof. Now break your floor piece while aiming at a corner. Once destroyed, quickly place two walls right next to each other above your 1x1. Also, replace your floor immediately after this. It may seem like a lot of actions at first, but once you get the timing down, it's relatively simple. Now edit your cone toward the corner that those two walls are touching. With this cone edit, you have two available options for side jumping. At this point, you typically try to read your opponent's position and choose your side jump option accordingly. So if they're pressuring one side, you hop out the other. To perform a side jump, run up the middle of that edited cone, jump out, look down, and place a floor plus ramp immediately. If done right, you should end up on the ramp. Move your crosshair higher here to connect a second ramp to that wall you put down for added protection. At this point, you can do whatever you like, but you should have height already. So the best option just to be safe is to do a 180 and turn towards your opponent. In summary, using this trick might seem pointless at first, but if you've got the time to set it up, the impact confusion has on your enemy can often be what decides a fight. Try it out and let us know what you think. Lastly, there's an old but resurging technique for gaining height off of cones. It's being called the FC Cone Jump. Well, it actually has another name, but we had to abbreviate it to keep it family friendly, folks. The FC Jump was shared just over a week ago and caught the attention of a whole lot of people. Apparently, no one really knew about it, despite the technique being almost a year old. So even though it's not new, it might still be new info for a lot of you. And it's surprisingly simple to do. Now, when you're standing on a cone that isn't yours, most players would simply jump and set a floor piece to go up layer. But this is the slow way, the basic way, the one that doesn't give you lots of height. What's better is performing a 90 off this pyramid. Position is similar to how you would on a ramp for a 90. Slightly on the left side of the cone if you're going right, and just a bit on the right side if you want to go left. Then pull out your walls and place one in front of the pyramid. When you reach the middle point of the cone, jump. Here, you're going to put two more walls, one above the first and another next to it. Finally, a quick floor and ramp to catch yourself. Then you can proceed with standard 90s for even more height. As we mentioned, this is only really useful if it's an opponent's pyramid. There isn't anything significantly better about doing this yourself over the typical 90s. But if it's your opponent's cone, it's much more useful than only jumping and placing a floor piece, which is what most of us do. But hey, now you know. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Some of these advanced techniques might seem downright impossible at first. And yeah, they are difficult, we'll give you that. But with enough determination, willingness, and of course, practice, you don't have to be a pro to pull these off. 
All right, guys, that's it for today's video. We really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to use code PROGUIDES when you make any sort of purchases. It really helps us out, and we really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you guys thought about this video and what you'd like to see next. We aim to bring you guys daily quality content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuides.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Once again, it's your host, Dan. You can find me everywhere at, at Daniel Ammerman, and we'll see you on the next one.